People should be conscious that they can change a corrupt system. Good evening and welcome. This is Face the Nation. Our topic of discussion today is the health crisis, the corrupt health crisis in Sri Lanka. Joining us this evening on the show to speak about all this and more, we've invited five guests to our studios. Joining us this evening are Professor Indi Karunathilakar, Secretary General, Asia Pacific Academic Consortium for Public Health, Dr. Ajit Amar Singh, Consultant Pediatrician, Dr. Chamal Sanjeeva, Chairman, Professional Forum of Physicians on Medical and Civil Rights, Dr. Ananda Vijayavikrama, President elect, Sri Lanka Medical Association, as well as Dr. Thinwan Vikrama Singha, General Committee Member of the Government Medical Officers Association. You too can join in as far as the conversation is concerned. You can send your WhatsApp messages to not 76 656 5353. The number once again, not 76 656 5353, to post questions from our panelists this evening. On to my immediate left is Niresh Eliathambit, who is the consultant English news director at News First. So let's get the ball rolling with Professor Indi Kharunathilaka. Secretary General of the Asia Pacific Academic Consortium for Public Health. Your time starts now. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you, Shamil. So, yes, and we are discussing a very important topic and a very timely one as well. So, I would say uh, that health system is in crisis at the moment and it's due to many reasons. And if you see the, the most immediate or most visible areas, that will be most visible and would be mostly affecting the people. One is the availability of medicinal drugs. Other one is the availability of health professionals, doctors, nurses and the health professionals. If you take those two areas, what patients or the citizens of the country see is there are issues. They may not understand the deeper issues but definitely they can see there are issues related to medicinal drugs availability, prices, at the same time there are issues related to the availability of health professions and a lot of health professions and doctors are migrating. So outwardly also you can see there are serious issues. And if you look deep down, the crisis is actually very deep rooted. And Probably the reasons that has led to this crisis are the same reasons that has led to the crisis in the country. Basically, the corruption and nepotism, chronism and similarly mismanagement. The same areas. So, when you really study the current health system problem, you can see all these issues. You can see corruption, you can see lack of efficiency, you can see mismanagement, you can see favoritism, you can even say nepotism. So all these areas can be identified. And other thing that we can, we can identify is it happens at all levels. So you cannot pinpoint this to one area, one section or even one person. It happens at all levels, top to bottom, at all situations. So. There is a crisis and if you go into a little bit deeper, especially in the main two areas that I have mentioned, now if you take the medicinal drugs, again, the reasons for crisis is multifactorial. There are many reasons. Human resource problem, again, the reasons are multifactorial. But this problem points out to rather serious indication that the system has failed. Why I am telling system has failed is generally in health system or any system there are multiple checks and balances to make sure that even if something goes wrong still there are other places or other checks and balances so that the damage is minimized. For example if you take say the importation of drugs there are several steps that has to be followed. So even if one step fails, still there are checks and balances. So when there are problems in these checks and balances, or when these checks and balances are removed for manipulation or due to ulterior motives, that is where the system collapses. So that is what we see. That is what we see in the in the drug issue or the medicinal drug issue. Right. And if you take the, the human resources, 
uh, huge issue again multifactorial but at the moment what we see is large number of health professionals doctors and others are leaving the country I would say it's more than just leave in the country it's basically the situation has forced them to leave so that has also put the health system into crisis so i think we need to focus in all these areas to identify the current situation the current crisis in detail <coughs> thank you very much uh, professor indi karnataka secretary general of the asia pacific academic consortium for public health i now move my attention towards dr ajit amar singha consultant pediatrician the time starts now thank you I think when we begin to discuss about the healthcare system or the crisis of it, first we must analyze where we were and where we are and where we will be, we will be heading. Now in the world, I mean I don't think this is well known to the general public, Sri Lankan healthcare system is considered as one of the most cost effective healthcare systems in the world that we should not forget. Our per capita healthcare expenditure is about 400 US dollars per year. So when you, are, when you compare it with other developed countries, now for example UK, the per capita healthcare expenditure is about 4,000 to 5,000 US dollars, 10 time, times ours. And in US it's 9,000. Now if you take our healthcare indices, these indices are almost similar to developed countries. So we must first look at our current healthcare system and it is this excellent healthcare system which has faced a crisis situation. I don't think this crisis is purely due to the economic crisis of the country. Now, if you take the health care expenditure, the health care budget of 2023, it is almost double of 2021 in rupee terms. It's something like in, in 2000, so 2021, it was 223 billion rupees. Now it, was, it is 443 billion. It's almost double. Now, if you take even the depreciation of dollar, the the money spent on health has not been reduced. So I don't know how a shortage of trucks, a shortage of uh, other equipment in this system has arisen. There's no reason. And also, in addition to the, the crisis of not having enough devices, not having, having enough equipment, not having enough medicine in the system. There is a problem with regard to the quality of medicines that are being distributed, especially in government hospitals and also in private sector. Now, in addition to that, as Professor Indika explained, there is a crisis in healthcare manpower, human resource crisis, but that particular crisis is not confined to the healthcare system. So now with a minimum amount of money, with an excellent healthcare system, we have achieved certain indices in the world, mm -hmm. which are comparable to other developed countries. Now it is this particular healthcare system which has been put to strain which has been brought into disrepute during a very short period of time. I think that is what we have to discuss, how it happened and who are responsible for this. Oh, who, who is responsible? If I say there has been a crisis which happened during the past two years, people who are in charge of this healthcare system during the past two, three years. So okay. are, you, are you trying to say the Minister of Health who was, who is now the Minister of Environment is the one who is responsible for the current crisis? Him and also the people who are responsible. I mean, there's a team who are leading this healthcare system. Ah, so they are responsible. Oh, okay. They are responsible. He's not a single person. He's one and there's a, there is a team. There is a team. So that team is also responsible for this. So when you say uh, 
team, what do you mean by that? The healthcare hierarchy, people who are at the top of the administration of health system, they are responsible. So, who do you point the finger at, uh, Dr. Ajit? I can't point the finger at one person. Minister has been removed. Right. For whatever reason. And there was a protest by the general public, by the doctors, various civil organizations during past six months about certain malpractices in the healthcare system. Right. That is very well known. So basically, Alibaba and the 40 thieves. Can they call so? So if there are 40 people? Maybe more. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Rajit Amal Singh, consultant pediatrician. I now move my attention towards Dr. Tamal Sanjeeva, chairman of the Professional Forum of Physicians on Medical and Civil Rights. Yeah. yeah. Good evening. And uh, so I would like to start this. The, when we were born just three, three to four decades ago, the, we uh, described Sri Lanka as a third third uh, that means the third world developing country from the for last four decades period ultimately we end up as a defaulted state or the maybe the question about the failed country so this uh, and uh, now we are in the twin crisis situation one aspect there's a political crisis and then for the economic crisis going on so with this the combination of the these two one is the political crisis and economic crisis then ultimately it touched to the ground level people and that is why we have to talk about the health and education system fail. So I think this is the maximum level that we can, that the people is feeling now, the how the last 40 years or 45 years period, as Dr. Ajit mentioned, the total system, the failing of the total system happened. And now when it touched to the health of the people's living and for their, in their food, and their drugs and the day-to-day -day activities, and also when they when they face that the communicable disease or non-communicable disease state and it's rising, and when you are falling, the as Dr. Ajit mentioned, we had the a great respect from the world regarding the we are achieving the highest level of the health indices for the last three, uh, 30 to 40 years period, despite of the the low allocation from the GDP. But now, the recently the Auditor General issued the report to the Parliament. After 30 to 40 years time, we are now had a decrease, you know, the downgrade state of our health. Now the, our maternity mortality rate is rising, the under five children's death rate is rising, mm. and also the HIV AIDS, the, the screening is failing, the tobacco usage is rising, and also the, the, the beds per children, or the beds per the pregnant mothers, also the, we had the, uh, the 750 patients per one bed for the pediatric units mm -hmm. and around 800 uh, pregnant mothers per one bed that is the when we come for the maternal uh, reviews so this is clearly indicate that the, the for the last 30 to 40 years period as a system mm -hmm. this administration and management failure happen and then it come to the, this economic crisis level yeah uh, dr Samal, very quickly now the recent controversy surrounding yeah. the human immunoglobulin matter yeah. that has sparked a lot of controversy now the health minister has changed now, now there is a new health minister yeah is that something that the health sector is satisfied with no because the as i uh, mentioned very clearly this the, the 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 crisis of this the health system is not that we can't finger point to one person as a whole from the politician the advocacy to bureaucracy level all the administrative management level as a totally gathered they should responsible for the, this health system failure the i can show you the one example as you mentioned about this the recent immunoglobin issue this is the letter issued from the secretary of health i don't know secretary of health the signed by uh, Mr. Janaka Sri Chandragupta regarding this the immunoglobulin tender process and it clearly we know that the Ministry of Health Medical Supply Division and so the NMRA State Pharmaceutical Corporation all there are nearly three to four government and semi-government institutions who are responsible for the health sector and the people's well-being so this letter very clearly mentioned that he is informing about this tender process to the all mentioned authorities there and the 
CEO of the NMRA mentioned that regarding this company, since 2013, this company tried to get the general manufacturing license to Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. So that means that 10 years time, he's not a qualified supplier to the, our Ministry of then, Health. Then why did the Minister of, the Secretary of the Minister of yeah. Health issue this letter? Yeah, that's why. Right. So this is not the first instance, as I mentioned previously, one, once, the, just uh, two to three months back, we highlighted the, about the islands issue and how the how he violated all the financial regulation and altered he has signed in this letter with the letterhead of the company who tried to get this the islands with the highest price he very clearly mentioned please to the uh, department procurement committee dpc please consider this bidder's request as he's a past supplier so this I think we don't need to discuss. So it's, it's not only the Minister of Health who has to be changed, even yeah. the Secretary of the Minister of Health has Secretary to be changed. Secretary of Health and all the person who's involved. involved in for this issue for last 20 to 30 years, since Minister H.M. Fauci to the now present Ramesh Patirana, even the ministers change. This the top level bureaucracy officers mm. are not changed for last 34 years. Right. So thank you very much, Doctor. This, this is a network. Yeah. This is a network. This is a network we have to address. Right. That is why this is a mafia, as you mentioned earlier. Thank you very much, Doctor Sawan Sanjeeva, Chairman of the Professional Forum of Physicians on Medical and Civil Rights. I now move my attention towards Doctor Anand Vijayvikram, President of the President Elect of the Sri Lanka Medical Association. Uh, Doctor Vijayvikram, alarming stories that are coming out from the health sector in the country what's going on yeah i think when you if you say health system is in crisis probably that's a it's a too simplified statement it is in deep crisis it's in serious crisis and it had never been in a crisis like this not to this extent of course there had been various instances where there were crises in the health sector we know that but not to this extent. This has never happened. This is unprecedented. But it's happening in the health sector over the last one and a half to two years. This is unprecedented. So this has led to a very serious situation in the health system, which Dr. Ajit and others explained. Now we were having a very good system, a low with a low cost, with a low cost model, right? which was uh, sort of took, uh, which was taken as an example to show as a showcase to other countries but now this is in a serious crisis and uh, at, at times I wonder whether, whether, it's, whether it, is an, uh, it is a sort of a, a deliberate measure to disrupt or destroy this health system because uh, looking at what has been happening you may we have we have seen over the last one and a half years we have now at the beginning of last year the problem we had was a shortage of drugs due to uh, lack of dollars, lack of foreign currency, but now then it expanded with other problems. The, the uh, doctors and others uh, start moving to other countries. Then, in addition to lack of drugs, we started getting low quality drugs or drugs where the quality is uh, not assessed. And then the people were getting various reactions. Deaths have been reported. So this sort of crisis have been uh, never we have never seen. We are now I have been working in the health sector for more than 30 years as a doctor, and we have never experienced this much of crisis. Uh, I think it is uh, it is uh, also one of the biggest issues is this uh, lack of checks and balances, which are there, which were there, to safeguard the system. These are not being implemented. So it is a very serious situation and unless this is corrected immediately, we are going to have a very serious situation in the near future. So when you said, uh, Dr. Ananda, that this seems to be something that is happening deliberately, if you even look at the statement that was made by the former Minister of Health, Kelly Ramukwal in Parliament, saying there is a reason that there are funeral parlours outside hospitals, this in fact raises an eyebrow yeah of course yes i mean how can one uh, how can a person in charge of the health sector be such insensible insensitive to to the problems so i, I can't understand how we can make such as such statements also dr anand I, I just want to pick your brain on this now a few months ago I recollect, Niresh, we were speaking about this matter very aggressively 
um, on Face the Nation with regard to the no confidence motion that was brought against Health Minister Kaili Ramukwella. In Parliament, that no confidence motion was defeated. And if you look at the statement that was made by the SSPP General Secretary, Sagar Khare was recently saying that the minister has not been proven guilty of any wrongdoing. Now it seems that the president himself has understood that the Minister of Health, Kerry Ramukwal, is not suitable for this position and henceforth he has been removed. What do you have to say about this? Yes, so uh, ultimately, it seems that the parliament was right. Um, well, I think the votes in Parliament has many uh, many in, uh, reasons and many implications. So I don't want to comment on uh, on that and what is happening in the Parliament. Uh, we have seen what sort of things happening in the Parliament over the last several years, which <laughs> we cannot agree. Sometimes we are ashamed to see that is our Parliament. That is to say that is our Parliament. Uh, so it has gone to that level at times. Uh, but having said that, it doesn't mean everybody in the Parliament is like that. Uh, but for this problem, I think it is uh, not only the, uh, the, uh, the people who are in charge of these systems are responsible. Mm. It's not, uh, not a single person, right. but of course uh, so there can be, hopefully there can be changes uh, with, the, with, the exp with the change which happened recently. Mm. I mean, we are hopeful. Th th thank you very much, Dr. Anand Vijayakrama. President-elect of the Sri Lanka Medical um, Association, um, I, I just want to pose questions to all five of you, but I'll wait until the first round is over to do that. So I want to uh, pick Dr. Tenuan Vikram Singh, a general committee member of the Government Medical Officer Association, your brains on what is going on in the country at present. Uh, what's happening? First of all, thank you very much for calling us the GMI for this valuable discussion. Uh, starting from the topic today, we are talking about medical mafia. If you look at uh, the definition of mafia, the simple definition says that it is the organized group of criminals, the organized group of people who do crim crimes. So I would like to say that not only a one group, there are several groups that who are doing criminals at the moment, who are being criminals at the moment. As my panel was talking about I was want to tell that there are two broad categories the drug mafia and the human resource mafia so if you talk about the drug mafia again we are going to break it down to three more categories the drug shortage the quality and the drug cost all three are being mafias now so recently the former health minister was giving media statements saying that the number of patients that comes to the government institutes has been increased by 40 percent. So it is not because of any other reason, but because people cannot afford for private, medi private uh, medical facilities. That is why they have been diverted to the government sector. And on top of that, as doctor, all, the, all the doctors presented, if you consider about the health index core of the world, World Health Index Core, we lies at the 41st, 47th position now with a per capita budget of 160 USDs and US lies at the 69th position with a 10,690 USDs per capita budget. So we are maintaining such a good health system despite all these problems because of the human resource we have and the quality healthcare system we were having. Going back to this immunoglobulin thing, mm. if you go to the NR MMRA website and see their main vision and their main objective, it says that they increase patient access to quality assured medicinal products, which has been violated by themselves. So Dr. Shamal showed that letter of acceptance from the health secretary. The NMRA people comes and says that they don't know anything about this. But the same letter that has it accepted by the health secretary has been copied to the NMRA. So how can they say that they don't know about this problem? That means they don't go through the letters that they receive. Mm. But, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Do Dr. Tenwan, the problem is now, because you are representing the GMOA, the problem is what has the GMOA done about all this? But if you look at it, in other countries, if there is a matter or a corrupt activity, 
that is surrounding a 1 billion rupee scam, the minister will not be just changed. The minister will be arrested. The secretary of the Ministry of Health will be arrested. That is how an investigation will start. At least a suspension has to happen. But in Sri Lanka, nothing of that sort happens. Everyone seems that, guess what? The president has decided that they are going to uh, change heads. It seems like the package shuffle, the jokers still remain. So, so being a policy-driven organization, we don't believe even the changing of faces will be a solution for this problem. So it is not, we can't pinpoint and say that this person is the person that is responsible for this one. There are, as, as said by the other panelists, the network. The everyone in this hierarchy system is responsible for this one. Because they say that the fraud, and fraud seal has been put and fraud signature has been put. So where is the investigation for fraud documents? So if a, if a drug that is administered through your veins can be imported through these type of channels, and if the thing is not purified, if the thing can, if, he, if the thing is contaminated, and if the health minister, form health minister comes and says that it contains saline, we are happy if it is saline. But he has no proof about it being saline. It has not been tested. It is still not tested, and there is no official report available. So how is he saying that it's saline? That is, that is another problem. No, this, how it this, comes to the media and sells This is a non-existent company registered uh, in, in Sidhu. Uh, in Sidhu, an address in Sidhu. How do we no, not know that it's just dirty water from the Danuganga? No one knows. No one knows. But actually, if it is saline, we should be happy. Because if it is even immunoglobulin, it is being derived from the human plasma. There are two processes, separation and purification. If the purification process is not followed up properly, how can, we assure, how can we assure that the diseases has not been gone to those patients that has been administered these sort of vials? And then the, then the additional secretary responsible for this one comes to the media and says, even though that this stock is withdrawn, we have sufficient immunoglobulins in Sri Lankan health system. Then why they imported this as so emergency this where, purchase? This is where, uh, Dr. Denwan, I feel the role of the GMOA should be more because you all go and advise President Gotabe Rajapaks about fertilizer matters. You all go and protest when there are rail union railway union strikes and trade union action. But when something of this sort happens, that is a gym way. Let me tell you. That, what what that, are you all doing? That you aren't you all supposed to look at the interest of the public that you are serving? That the, this health ministry problem, health crisis, we were talking in three same forums for about last few months. But the president removed the minister on last Monday. So what is the consequence? We have been, as the responsible trade union, we have been exposing all these into the media. And if you, if you can recall, about three weeks back, we held a strong protest in front of the health ministry. And there was big chaos in the media and area that we confronted with the police and the roadblocks and all those stuff. This was the eye-opener. Following that, only the people, on the same day, on the same day we had a discussion with the president. And on the next day we had a discussion with the uh, Honorable Sagar Ratnayak, where we expressed our views, where we, where we conveyed the message where the health sector is. So, if you think that GMO has been silent, that means that no, we GMO is involved in all the other matters, which is even affecting the, which is even affecting the kitchen <laughs> in the country. But look at the problems that are being faced at present. This is fatal. I understand. And and the people who are depending on the public health system will fear to go to the public health system to get with that is the, that is that is the worst thing that can happen if the public sector fail to have the faith on the healthcare delivery system, free healthcare system, public healthcare system, that is the worst thing that could happen to a country, if they lost the faith. It's, um, it's sad, Nirish, that we are in this situation and we are discussing about problems after problems in Sri Lanka. Um, the last week was about corruption, this week about health crisis, we have spoken about the health crisis over and over again and this happens again and it just sends jitters down my spine just to know that Sri Lanka's health system is has almost collapsed. Dr. Chamal, you 
you are very vocal about what went wrong on this. Yeah. Tell us, make make the public aware what, what really happened. Yeah. Every everyone seems that the minister changing is good enough. We saw the minister Kehir Ramukwella speaking to the media after his appointment as the minister of health. Minister of health, when a journalist posed a question to him, why have you been changed? He says. Right now, the Ministry of Environment has a bigger role to play in the country and henceforth, I think, according to the Minister, I think the President has given me this responsibility because he yes. thinks that this is a vast area where someone like me has to be involved and my expertise is required. But what is going on? So he thinks it's a promotion. It's like promotion, yeah. So now the, as the 10 one and all the professionals are very clearly describe what has happened because of the there's a failure of the bureaucracy administration and management level and the peop and we are now the just few months back the president has uh, table uh, new anti-corruption bill and he mentioned that the we are having the most powerful anti-corruption bill in the uh, southeast asia but unfortunately we have enough anti-corruption system already because the now we are talking about this NMRA and the health system issues, but I, I would like to show this 2021-2022, uh, uh, the Auditor General report about the NMRA. This very clearly mentioned the, what is going on for the last few years, and it clearly mentioned the name of the officers and thing, and every bid process, there is a problematic area. So I think we don't need the more anti-corruption below anything to uh, get the uh, tackle these issues because we have enough audited audit reports and as you know that the core every day they are talking about the health ministry and they are talking about the all the audit audits report and this is about the 2015 2018 again about the presidential commission report regarding the NMRA uh, unfortunately at least uh, Dr. Tenwan there the, this once this complaint made by Dr. Harit Tal that time the, the secretary is a uh, one of the complainer eh? and this also mentioned about the how the NMR and health systems fail happen right and the reason the auditor general report i'll show very clearly it mentioned the uh, this report is uh, about the car is 2022 about the health ministry it's a 280 page audit report of the every aspect of the health sector from human resource transport medicine even this mention how the health officers the administrator and the management officers get bribery and the corruptions through the cleaning services of the hospitals right and and also the tender issues regarding the oxygen supply insulin like that eh? every aspect that's so all i think that we have enough and enough documented uh, charges against these health officers, uh, but as the, you mentioned, the, no one is there to responsible. And this much of, they have violated repeatedly the all the financial regulations, administrative issues, and even the civil uh, legal issues. But still, the secretary, additional secretaries, all the officers are there. And so the one thing is that they believe that there's umbrella protection coming to the politicians because as I. Uh, uh, initially step I stop as they said this is a network because they know this is a network no one can expose other one because not we can't finger point to the governing party politicians so I had experience when we are talking about this the health civil crisis sometimes the opposition party members they also worried about it so I had some telephone calls also from them because as I mentioned this is a organized white collar robbery and most of these issues, we can't go to court because these are ultimately approved by the one aspect, either cabinet procurement committee or the ministry level procurement committee, even sometimes the president, right? So the issue is that the ones we expose the buying the antibiotic for the 50 million more than the lowest price bidder. So president very clearly mentioned to the ministry of finance, uh, there should be transparency about this, the, uh, emergency purchase model. So what has happened is the ministry stopped this the 50 million uh, procurement process and they have gone for the 120 million higher price bidder and they took that procurement very easily. So no one has a no audit, no discipline, no audit there. So that this is the issue that the, now ultimately the people are facing this crisis. Mm. 
we are paying now why the professionals are talking about this tax issue we are not against for the uh, that mean there's a tax reduction from the pay because we we professional against what, what is the ultimate outcome of using these taxes so now let's see about this immunoglobin issue us dollars 3 million scam happened so these are the money that we have to pay and the 100 million to the optical lens issue so ultimately we have to pay these things even though these are the indian credit just because, line unicef just, yeah, just because, whatever it is yeah, just because the president changes the minister that doesn't solve the that problem doesn't solve. the reason you know that the uh, professor from the economic department the peradini exposed a unborn ki, uh, fetus in the mothers in the Sri, uh, recent Sri Lanka, they are debted for the 1.2 million. 1.2 million for the unborn fetus in the pregnant mothers because of this type of crisis. Well, uh, what I don't understand is, Dr. Anand, look at the statements that are being made by the ruling party members. One member comes and says, when the electricity tariffs are high, don't use electricity. If, the, if you use electricity sparingly, the electricity bill won't be high. We know that. Yeah. that that's simple logic. Then the, mini, the, the, the Secretary General of the uh, SLPP, Sagar Karyavasam, following the uh, switch of the ministerial portfolio of Kelly Ramakwala says, we are against the uh, switching of portfolios, but Minister Ramesh Patirana would do a better job. What is what's happening in the uh, Dr. Balanda? Uh, yeah, I mean no, uh, from, the, from where can we even laugh? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't want to comment on this politician's comment. I think it's a waste of time to comment on this uh, not using electricity and <laughs> reducing the bills and that sort of thing. He's an economic professor in economics, it seems. That's what we hear. Uh, now I think one good example is this the thing we are talking about today and last several weeks this immunoglobulin issue. Now this is a masterly mind theft. It's a theft. It's a masterly mind theft. Why do I say so? Now how did it, it get exposed? It got exposed because some patients who had this drug injection had reactions when such reactions occur the doctors are supposed to report it to a committee which look look into this drug reactions and in that committee there's an immunologist who knows about the subject and none, and some of these patients are actually his clinic patients and so he got in inquisitive and he got down the drug which he has never seen before and then he inquired so that is how it surfaced. Now just imagine if these patients did not have any reactions, what would have happened? All these 20,000 odd vials would have bought, 1 billion rupees would have paid, people would have got commissions and things would have, nobody would have known. And this company is a company, as Niresh mentioned, a company based in Sidhwa. Yes. You, is there an address to this company? Uh, in the tender, uh, yeah, in the yeah. tender bid, there is, yes. and but, but there are some other things. But now, nothing exists there. Yeah. Nothing exists there. Nothing uh, there, exists exists there. there is an address. No padlock. So is it, is it uh, Dr. Anand? Now, when there is a procurement of this sort that takes place, as yeah. Dr. Chamal mentioned, if since 2013, this company has not been given the green yes. light. Yes, is there a technical the committee? Yes. Isn't there a technical committee to? understand whether this company in Sri Lanka has the potential or the capability to do this product in yeah, the Sri Lankan that, market? That is, that is the question because in their bid they say they get the raw material and manufacture it. No, but they, now, they mentioned but that they, in they, the bid. Based on, based on the reports Dr. Samal that yeah. I have, yeah. um, even the mother company when inquired by the of officials yeah, yeah. Uh, in India, uh, the, India. India. The, India. India. the Indian company yeah. has said that they don't even uh, produce, produce uh, yeah. Yeah. this. And not, not only that, now there is uh, the, in the procurement guidelines, there is a tender limit which the ministry can approve. And the, the limits above that has to go to the cabinet. Now if it goes to the cabinet, it goes to the finance ministry. 
and generally I believe their officers give good uh, sort of uh, observations. That's what we have seen from whether whether those are acceptable by the cabinet, accepted by the cabinet or not is a different issue. But they give, give good recommendations. So what happened here is this tender is uh, now that it say the procurement guidelines says if it is GOSL government funds, if it is more than 500 million, it should go to the cabinet. If it is foreign funded, if it is more than 1000 million, it should go to the uh, cabinet. Now this is valued at some 900 million. Just below uh, 1 billion. 1 billion. And they said it will be bought from bought using the Indian credit line. So it is foreign funded. But then we understand it was paid by the treasury. But, but uh, Dr. Uh, Indian credit line yeah. is a credit line. Yeah. We still have to pay for yeah, yeah, true, true. it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not yeah, yeah. a foreign grant. Yes, yeah, but that so. is a, there is a, is a, there's a point there, I agree. But the thing is, now Indian credit line drugs, what we know is hmm, the drugs which are bought uh, that, that uh, approved these tenders go to the Indian High Commission, then they go through that. There's a process. And that process did not happen in this instance even though they said it is through the Indian credit line. So they use that hmm, not to go to the cabinet tender board. Mm. No, but, but, right? so that is why I say it is, uh, the, uh, it was well planned out. very well planned, planned out. out. out so, Dr. Ajit, now it doesn't, you don't have to have a rocket scientist to figure out that the minister, the secretary and the NMRA head has to be suspended immediately. Yes. You don't have to have a rocket scientist to understand Definitely that. Definitely not. <coughs> and so and why Shamir, yeah. it's not just suspended. The, they should be prevented from boarding a plane. Absolutely. Yeah. And holding yeah. public office. Yes, if they have earned a couple of hundred million rupees, they can simply pack their bags and, and, uh, and leave. Yeah. And we know that once you leave Sri Lanka, our governments can never seem to get people back. There's a central bank governor who's living it up in Singapore for the past several years. Mm. Uh, yeah. No, but, yeah. but, but the thing is, Dr. Ajit, you don't have to have a rocket scientist to understand that the NMRA head, the Secretary of the Ministry of Health, as well as the Minister of Health, has to be responsible and should be suspended. And an investigation has I, to be carried out immediately. Yeah, definitely. Isn't that the responsibility definitely. of Ramesh Patrina as the new Minister of Health? Yeah, definitely. Now, let me explain this. Now, this particular immunoglobulin issue is only the tip of iceberg. Is this a life-saving drug? It's a, no, it's a, it's a tip of a iceberg. Yes. What I mean is, this is an instance case. where uh, what is called a waiver of registration has been given or supposed to be given or not given by the NMRA. Now, this particular waiver of registration is a process where a drug comes into the country without going through the normal procedure of registration. So, there has not been any kind of a proper evaluation of this particular drug. Now, can I explain in detail as how it happened? Now, uh, I have a document here which is franked on the 3rd of October 2022, where a particular company called Isolas Biotech Pharma AG Limited has uh, made a quotation for a quantity of uh, 7,500 packs of that, this particular drug. Now, you have to note the name of this company. It says private. Right. This same company is giving another letter. One year later, this says Isola Biotech Pharma AG signed by a proprietor. You are in the field of uh, corporate. So, you would know the difference between a limited and a, and a single property. Mm. So, the question is whether this company is totally a fake company. How can it have two names? The older one is a limited. Second one is a sole property company. That is one. Now, <coughs> now, this particular quotation has been made. And after that, 
We have a letter issued by the Secretary Health. This one, right? This one. Correct. Thank you. On the 4th of January 2023, where this particular company has been granted permission to supply this drug for a period of three months, right? Under the Indian credit line. And there's an annex to this letter, which says it is 22,500 wires. So initial quotation was for 7,500 wires. And the total cost of this amount is 2.9 million US dollars, which is close to 926 billion. Uh, to 26 million, million close million. to 1 billion rupees. Now you can see in this letter the top. The frank important urgent. Right? Now you have to note when this letter was issued and these franks were made no kind of a registration, either a registration or a waiver of registration has been given to this particular drug. And you can also see on the top, there's a frank dated 11 January 2022 and signed by a particular officer in the ministry. Please order immediately. Now, Dr. Shaman said that was the Ministry of the uh, Secretary of the Health Ministry signed. No, no, this, yeah, yeah. no, this is no, no, this no. signed by the Secretary no, of the like letter. letter. First, the Secretary has signed this signed letter, letter, and then this, it has gone to the Medical Supply Division. Yes. Okay. And so the Medical Supply Division has minuted there because of the Medical Supply Division has to order from the company to because they are the one who is handling yes. the order. Mm -hmm. So that is why I think they have mentioned to the company that the please supply because the supply this letter immediate. signed by Secretary and copy to the additional Secretary, secretary. Procurement Direct DDG Direct DDG. And Director General Dr. Asela Gunawardana, DDG MSD, Director MSD, NMRA Chairman, and the SPC Chairman. Yeah. So, officially, the Secretary has copied this letter to the six office bearers in January this year. Yeah. By knowing this company is not a registered company since 2013. And right. So, the procurement process, TEC, everything. And also, finished you have to note, note that this particular letter was signed on the 4th of January yeah. and the decision to order immediately this particular drug was made on the 11th of January and the so-called waiver of registration was issued only on the 17th of February. February. Fake document. So this is the Fake this is the document Fortune. which they say they have in custody. Which they say is a fake document. Even this fake document was signed or not signed on the 17th of February. It's very clear. This particular drug was ordered to brought into the country without any so, kind of document. So, Dr. Ajit, are you, are, are you trying to tell me yeah. that a 1 billion rupee procurement yes. was not cross-checked by any of the ministry officials prior to being paid? Being at least placed door, place the placing order. the door. At least placing the order. We don't know when the payment was made, mm. at least before the order was placed. So now, now who is saying that this is a forged document? Now, uh, very lately, you know, when this issue came up, uh, it's the, the, the chairman of the NMRA who issued the press statement on the 3rd of October, saying that this is a fake document. No, so my no, argument are, is, there was either a fake document or no document at all when the order was placed. So who is responsible? And on the other hand, there was a this is a, this was a time where NMRA will issue a waiver of registration for any purchase order made by yeah. the ministry. Any decision on purchasing by the ministry. Because they have taken that decision. Okay. Uh, if the minister decides, we give the waiver of registration. Can I, can I explain? So, one didn't even bother with the waiver of registration. Correct. Yes. yes. No, the question is then, if they are issuing waiver of registrations like that, why should one produce a forged letter? Yes. Because anyway, they get the letter. 
See. So what is the need of There's for a folding? There's a confusion now. Now there is a normal registration procedure which is laid down in this National Medicinal Regu uh, Regulatory Authority Act. A normal procedure. And, and there is a... Now, even through the normal procedure, if they say that there is... Uh, there is no way that if, 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 if somebody is arguing that if a particular drug is going through the normal procedure, that it would get delayed to be imported, there is a special, uh, special. special clause where the minister can specify before this date you must give the registration or not. Understand? No? Through the normal procedure, now if the minister or the ministry wants a particular drug, due to an urgency, right. then the minister can specify. Uh, specify it and tell the NMRA give this particular registration before this particular day. Now, the way of registration is, is given for some other, other, other specific purpose. It is laid down in the 109th clause of that. The authority may grant permission in special circumstances such as to save a life, a life, right? One particular person, or supposing a person is dying, there is a drug that has to be given to that particular person. So you can use this clause to bring a drug to be given to that particular person mm. to save that life, a life, right? To control an outbreak of an infection, epidemic situation. Now, Corona, you can say, is an epidemic situation. Or, an epidemic or any other national emergency or for national security to import and supply a particular medicine. Now, under which clause has this been covered? Has been covered. I mean, there is a clear violation of, of the, the regulations of the act. And there is a, as you say, this is a criminal offence. It is specified in that. It says, every person who contravenes any of the provisions of this act or any regulation made there under shall be guilty of an offence and shall on conviction be liable where the nature of the offence involves injury to health of the public to a fine not exceeding 200,000 rupees or to imprisonment for a term not exceeding three years or to both such fine and imprisonment. So now this, this, this is a criminal offence. Th th this would be a good opportunity for the Minister of Justice to prove that is anti-corruption act is in action at yes. least he can he, he can prove a point yeah, yeah that's right in under sitting yes. because the already all the documents are very clear forensic document they all have proven and even in nimare uh, chairman the professor jayaratna has Jaya. accepted st Jaya accepted yes. and actually he mentioned he showed two very funny press release one is that even when we uh, exposed we as a quality field drugs initially minister rejected there's no quality field drugs but unfortunately he issued the press relief accepted there are quality field drugs in five instances in the anti uh, cefroxine then for the uh, cephalosporin issue and for the as a dialysis cat catheter like that a five instance he mentioned yes even the aspirin quartet aspirin he mentioned the aspirin produced in sri lanka does not carry aspirin to the methyl salicylate acids in that aspirin tablets. So, so like Dr. that yeah. there. Professor Indika, don't you think the real problem here is Kiri Ramukwala is not aware what has to be the emergency medicines that need to be purchased. So don't you think the Minister of Health himself should be a doctor by profession who has a technical knowledge so he would know that the bureaucrats around him won't be taken in circles. Uh. First, uh, your statement that the minister was unaware, probably it's very unlikely mm. because from the beginning, mm. many professional organizations, including SLMA and uh, several trade unions, everyone basically pointed out that there is no need to bypass the regular processes because now we are very much aware, it was very clearly explained what are the checks and balances that are there, that were there in the system from procurement or distribution, there are several checks and balances to make sure 
regarding the authority of the of the company and the registration and the quality so all these aspects there are several checks and balances even if one step fails still there would be other checks and balances so why when so many experts were telling that there's absolutely no need to go for a way of registration or basically to open the floodgates and that would lead to this kind of situation even then in spite of all this resistance or oh, everyone pointing out still the minister and the authorities went ahead with this decision when it was pointed out that i mean experts like dr anand vijay vikram and several others pointed out there's no need for way of registration you can basically have the there are enough provisions within the checks and balances there are enough provisions if you want emergency purchases and that could be done so what has happened is deliberately opening the flood gates and once that is done there is no point of saying that we are not responsible because once you open the flood gates even after point people pointing out that this can happen then they are responsible actually so that is what has happened so you can't say that we don't know who has put our signature or the seal or whatever because once you have removed that check and balance so obviously absolve himself obviously, from what has uh, obviously you know wrong. that it can be manipulated it's obvious because once the balance are removed so i mean many of us actually raise that question is it just a system failure or is it actually a deliberate purposeful sabotage of the system so so so, so professor now if you look at the past in 2021 we were all aware that the nmra database was deleted whether it was done accidentally or whether it was done purposely we are still we don't know yet because there's a court case on that pending at the, at the moment do you think that also had contributed uh, to the problems in the health crisis at present very much i mean that's why we are trying to say it's multifactorial i mean you can't pinpoint that single point i mean uh, in a, in a health system like sri lanka which has been well established for it to have a crisis situation it has to fail in many many situations so all these areas so that would in- involve administration purchasing procurement decision making policy making all these areas all these areas need to need to be affected and that that cannot happen accidentally it cannot happen accidentally and, so, and so clearly uh, there isn't even one person with an ounce of in- integrity and honesty among all these dozens to whom these documents have been copied mm-hmm. yet yeah, i mean the concern in fact is this has these points have been raised many times this has, from i mean uh, from 2022 i suppose in 2022 during the economic crisis sri lanka medical association is issued a statement and several others also issued statements so this has been pointed out so as dr anand said this is the worst ever of course yes the health crisis health sector in sri lanka has ever been yes, yes. definitely because we had a 30 old uh, 30 year war but this yeah. was not this, this, is, this is why this is why dr tenwan i'm really angry with the gmoa not because of anything else if you all did your job at least for a certain extent this wouldn't have happened i i think I, if i if i may answer because he is representing gmoa <laughs> i'm not representing it is it is not on the gmoa gmoa no, dr tenwan is it can we has been on the show before i know, he, I know. He, he very much can no, he's uh, interested in such question <laughs> but, but he very, very much can very much can answer yeah say say in way of traffic that's that's the may say it is not it is the gmoa and several many other sri lanka medical association several other professional associations which raised the voice and exposed these things no, to the no public. dr anand which my my, my point my it, point it, is not yeah. my point is not the about the slma yeah. no no even the gmoa all were not uh, there when the fertilizer crisis uh, happened right, you talking about the gmo a <laughs> former uh, president was the his favorite uh, question yeah, yeah he was he was behind he that. was behind <laughs> the fertilizer <laughs> issue as well i'm i'm telling you this dr then what this year let's take a look at the tea production in the country is at an all time low because of the fact that in 2021 that illogical move was made and the gmo a was behind that let me explain you about this yeah but but but, but, but 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 let's forget about that but at least no, no, matters as a, as of I raise yeah, the point but as matters of this sort when it happens right but matters of this sort this nature this seriousness happens where is the gmo i don't see all 
I don't see you all protesting. I don't see you all demanding no, the resignation of the minister. I don't see you all demanding the resignation of the uh, secretary of the Ministry of Health. I don't see the. Uh, no, I don't agree demand. with you, Shah. I don't agree with you because because uh, there are a number of health sector trade unions. So, if you go through the media briefings for last three months, we are the trade union, and I'm, I want to t t talk about Dr. Chamal also. He was also very vocal about these things. And we are the trade union that spoke about this corruption from the start. And without any hesitation, there was no any history in Sri Lanka that more than 2,000, 3,000 doctors came to Colombo just to protest against this health crisis. This is the first time that we held something like that. And if you can uh, point me out uh, any other protest like that, 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 that was the eye opener. And I just want I just, I just, past, just, don't, just, don't, just don't one more. One. I just want to add on to that. Yeah. Mm. And uh, talking about this, this uh, Isolase Pharma company, they have now found out that they have been importing another anti-cancer drug, Rituximab. That is also, they, they are the company that has been imported to Sri Lanka. It has been uh, withheld from the system now. Mm. And the other thing is, if the health authorities are telling that they don't know about this procedure anything, if the company is asking for GMP certificate since 2013, if the authorities has not granted that certificate to them, mm. why they have allowed, allowed to this critical vital drug that is given to neurological patients and pediatric patients especially, the immunoglobulin, to manufacture in this country where they don't have facility even to produce a paracetamol tablet. So, Dr. Denwan, on that note, will you all as the GMOA be demanding the prosecution and the arrest of all those involved in this entire, this terrible, I, I, don't, I don't want to call it a scam, it's, it's murder. A life-saving drug, 22,500 vials, 22,000 patients, life-saving drug and a, a mafia got together dozens of people including the top people in many medical institutions uh, are you all going to demand prosecution and jail time for this definitely gmo will be the first to do that because the new health minister assumed duty about two three days back and we have requested a early discussion with him to discuss about this health crisis and to point out what to do and what are the way forward to come out of this problem? No, I, I, Why I hasn't hope he met that. you yet? No, he was uh, assuming duty two days yesterday. back. No, only, no, only yesterday, yesterday only but yesterday. then yesterday evening itself he should have no, met no, you. No, no, we have sent them a courtesy call later and we have sent them but a agenda. But this is no time for courtesy. No. This is life-saving, life, life it's true. issue. It's true, it's true, but it will take at least two, three days for someone to grant an appointment. Because Not at all. He he has he has called for a so meeting right? yesterday evening with the health ministry officials no, to talk about no, this. The, thing. the point is, just as the GMO in the last five to six years were very much interested about increasing the salaries of the doctors, I hope and pray that you all act on this as well as much Definitely. as as much as you all were interested about your personal gains. Uh, Doctor uh, Ajit, you were also a vice president of the GMO a long time back. Which year was that? Uh, Actually, I was the general secretary of the GMOA from 1995 to 1997, three years. Then I was the vice president from 2000 to 2002. I would quote two instances where we took direct action on this type of issues. One was in 1995 when then health minister, Mr. Fauci, imported some substantive saline. It was, it was a very well known issue mm. and insisted the then CDDA director, Dr. Ajit Hindis, CDD was the President Institute of the NMR, NMRA, Cosmetic Devices and Drugs Authority and the then director was Dr. Ajit Hindis who later became the director general. He refused to give registration to this drug and he was immediately transferred by the minister. GMI immediately struck work and that was the instance where for the first time in the history AMS and GMA got together and struck work and we had a crisis in our association. I was the assistant secretary at that time and the secretary resigned saying this is a terrorist type of a strike. 
But we pre warn we said immediately replace the director, yes. immediately send him to the substantive board, and, and within, you all said action has to be taken. Yes, drastic action. Within the, 24 hours, it's for the public benefit. You were reinstated. Yeah. And there was inquiry on this issue, particular issue, and it was found this particular sale line was substantive. And this drug was immediately withdrawn from hospitals. Right? And it, it but don't you think made. such action has to be taken by the that GMO even now? Such action has to be taken by responsible trainees. That is one. Number two, in 1997, SPC imported some substandard vaccines from again an institute in, uh, in India and we pre-warned and said because we, we had our members in Family Health Bureau they said that the packs were broken and the cold chain was not maintained and the quality of these particular vaccines were not good and we had an outbreak of measles 1997, end of 1997. Right? Sorry, whooping cough. Whooping cough. We had outbreak, we had whooping cough. And at that instance, also, GMOA said the SPC has to be taken into task for importing such a, such a vaccine, and the vaccine was withdrawn from the market. And there was inquiry, and it was found what we said was correct. Right? So I think it's the responsibility of the trade unions to act not only about their own issues, but act on behalf of patients as well. So that is a responsibility. It has not been happening for the last five years. I mean, I mean, it's up to you to take a decision. It's a it's a democratic organization. But I want to remind the history of Chiang. And so right, I, I want to the, yeah. about the responsibilities of. of so I want to, I, I want to give uh, the five um, panelists, all of you, uh, doctors by profession. So I want to give all, the all five of you an opportunity uh, to wrap up because we have to finish the show at 11 um, p.m. Unfortunately, uh, so I want to give you two minutes each uh, as to what the way forward is now, and what advice do you have for the new minister in charge? So let's talk. Let's start off with uh, Professor Indiga. Yeah, uh, yes, thank you. So I think these issues that were raised are very pertinent. I think in a way, it's uh, uh, even though this immunoglobulin issue is, was unfortunate, in a way it was very fortunate that it, it was brought up. And that has really opened up many eyes and opened up the issue and uh, many, many issues that has been underlined. One thing we should remember is, true, all these problems are there, but this is this is an issue this is an issue that has to be that has to be addressed holistically that's we address holistically why i am telling is true that all these things issues were there all these malpractices corruption were there but without us knowing many problems that were there that were not highlighted i will say i mean, may not be as dramatic as this for example i would say say when it comes to certain drugs certain life-saving drugs like maybe ones that you give for heart attacks and so forth there's a monopoly the system is there the tender processes are there but always one company comes up so how does it happen and also drug prices now people are very worried about drug prices nowadays now do we know that still we don't have a proper pricing policy generally the drug prices were based on CIF price previously but the, when the pricing was done, you have to depend on the price that is quoted by the importer because there is no list regarding, no regular format regarding CIV price because it can change. Nowadays, fortunately, it has been changed to the international pricing. Still, Sri Lanka is the country that has the highest markup for medicinal drugs. Markup up to 60%. Nowhere in this world has this markup. Even after NMRA has decided to reduce this markup, then the pharmaceutical industry has gone to courts. So, now you can see what are the things that has been happening regularly. Now we are worried about these incidents we are, which are fine, but there has been so many issues. So, I, the same thing that I have mentioned previously, the same issues that has led to this country's crisis, the corruption, lack of efficiency, nepotism, favoritism, chronism, everything has been there. If you are to answer these problems, you have to look at 
in a very holistic way. So the way to go, easy way to go is actually there should be absolute accountability, transparency and also proper management and also meritocracy. So I hope the new minister uh, will take necessary steps but I mean unfortunately he has his work cut out at the moment because this problem is so deep rooted, really deep rooted. So I mean because uh, for the benefit of the health system I'm we wish him well and we wish him the courage and the, and the braveness uh, to clean up the system. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Indika. Dr. Ajit? Um, you are asking about the advice we can give to the health minister. I think the best advice I could give him is that he has to remember health ministry is not only a drug procurement agency. There are many other aspects to health of the country. Now currently, the country is facing a severe food crisis. Malnutrition is coming up from everywhere. And this is one of the most important areas the health minister has to concentrate as to how to avoid malnutrition among children and also how to ensure food security. Secondly, in addition to providing safe and quality drugs in sufficient numbers, he also has to remember that there are many other services in the health sector which has to be organized or reorganized. Now, health employees are leaving the country in large numbers and certain stations are lacking staff, consultants, medical doctors. So probably he has to do some kind of a redistribution of the workforce. And maybe after looking at the overall picture, he may have to expand certain institutions, close down certain institutions based on the manpower of this country. That is one. Secondly, there are regulated processes. Not only regulated processes, there are processes in which the proper distribution of medicines are ensured. There is a, there is a computer based system which is already installed but underutilized or malutilized in the, in the ministry. Mm -hmm. So that has to be functioned immediately to ensure that drugs are available in all institutions. Right. Thank you very much. Important. Thank you very much, Dr. Ajit. Uh, Dr. Chama? Yeah. So, regarding the immunoglobulin issue and the corrupted uh, the health crisis, I think the number one is that the I, even the, I, the president or the high officer should take immediate actions to remove, resign and produce these officers to the legal uh, department because the it's not happening as I mentioned from the last one and half years period repeatedly this type of corruptions happen and these are the well documented white collar robberies and as the president is thinking dreaming to build a smart country my question is how the country might be smart with this type of smart robberies happening in the country the country is getting smart in the robbery so I think that I know that the, this type of, as the, some the, I even mentioned that the, when we are doing this type of program, President Media Unit is very well observing this type of program. So I have enough experience. They are calling explanation of the describing the issues, but unfortunately they are not taking any actions or highlighting precedents about the fact and figures that we are facing. I I have one nice example before this one, as we are having a health crisis. One is the shortage, and we all mentioning even the present the new health minister also yesterday briefing that the, this health crisis is mainly due to the economic crisis but dr ajit and professor indik and also dr uh, ananda very clearly mentioned this is not totally depend on the economic crisis because we have more than the normal allocations even the other ministries give one to two percent to the health and we agree indian credit line unicef who and asian development bank fund so we have enough uh, funds flow into the health system and as you mentioned now it's become a this is uh, the Ministry of Health is not a ministry it's like a share market now and uh, I mentioned this one nice example this is the letter issued by the uh, Maligavata the director Maligavata kidney hospital 
mentioning when we don't have the routing supply we have to go for the emergency of the local purchase he when, let's see one drug when, is, when we get the normal supply it's a 13 rupees and when we go for get the higher purchase local purchase is 175 rupees so the price hijack is 1300 rupees now problem is that how the ministry is allowing or the resigning check to give this 1300 rupees by mentioning we don't have money right the, the funny thing is that when he exposed this critical analyze report to the director general health service he started inquiry about this director Right, there's an inquiry now going against this Dr. Charles Nogavella to expose and analyze in this right. the happening, this type of the financial mismanagement happened. He saw very clearly to Director General Health Service the price difference is 1300 only only he used the most drug use in the kidney hospital, Maligawa. Now there's an ongoing inquiry about this director to prepare this analysis. But what has happened to the all the High officers from secretary, DG, additional secretary, procurement, additional secretary, medical supply. So this, the US dollars, three million. This is the exposed one, right? As uh, Dr. Tenwan mentioned, the same company brought the cancer drugs to this type of false document reduction app to the country, and it, it is it is using up to this issue in the cancer hospital. The same company, same route. The other thing is the immunoglobulin issue now the custom said this drug has not mm. come to the custom not to the airport not to the routing ships so that is why the ultimately minister uh, former minister said this might be a uh, solution like saline and produce in the country somewhere so this is the uh, actually we expose whole iceberg in the country the crisis of the health system Totally mismanagement, bad the mismanagement at the man management and administrative level failure. Thank you very much. So the president, if president is not taking, it's up to the public. Thank you very much, Dr. Shamal. Dr. Anand? Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, I think uh, yeah, we have, as uh, others mentioned, there are many, many problems in the health sector and it's in a real crisis. Uh, today we were discussing mainly about the immunoglobulin issue, but it's not only the immunoglobulin, there are many other drugs, lot, so, lot of other drugs which are brought like this under waiver of registration uh, of uh, uncertain quality uh, without uh, proper evaluation. And then not only that, the problems of the manpower, not having adequate manpower, people are leaving the country the, from the health sector and also from other sectors. And then the nutrition issue, they, there are so many uh, issues in the health sector. And this needs to be addressed immediately and urgently. And uh, I personally believe and I try to be hopeful. Uh, as doctors, we always try to be hopeful when we treat patients. So similarly, we are hopeful here with the new minister, especially he being a doctor. Uh, I believe he understands the plight of patients, the poor uh, people. And uh, therefore, I believe he will take necessary actions. However, it will be difficult for him because for the last uh, couple of years at least for the last two years the the system was dominated by few corrupted individuals there are so many good uh, individuals administrators and other doctors in the ministry of health but unfortunately the things are dominated by a group of small, small group of corrupted individuals in the uh, the nmra and the ministry of health and so on so with this it will be a difficult task for the new minister of health but uh, i believe he will have the necessary strength the, and the courage uh, to do the correct things and and to save the free health system for our country and for the future generations thank you very much dr and dr Tenuan. yeah uh, first of all uh, that, uh, regarding the accusation made to gmo i would like to mention that details regarding all these facts we have been providing to health ministry officials the president up to the president we have been providing continuously as a results only as a result only the public pressure also increased we have been giving media reports press releases and everything that ultimately resulted the change of the face of the ministry but i should say that changing only the minister will not be a solution because that network that we have been talking about for the last two and a half hours it still remains as it is so we have to find out this network and we have to get rid of this network to get, come to a solution. And if you go to the MSD website, 
there are 96 drugs that has quality failures. So, if as a trade union, if you start to have trade union measures for each and every drug, ultimately the general public will suffer again. So, GMO as a very responsible trade union, we are looking at all the aspects before going into these trade union measures. But continuously we have been pressurizing on this matter. And regarding the way forward, I would like to say that with the Auditor General's report that has been published in 2022 May regarding the drug shortage and quality failure clearly gives you about 14 to 15 recommendations what to follow. So if the health authorities, if the new health minister can make the structural changes that is required mm -hmm. and can take the disciplinary action that is to be needed and can follow only these 16 recommendations, I think we can come out of this situation for a some extent. So that now the emergency purchase has become a routine practice. What they do is they make a drug to be short of stock and they go for emergency purchase and then all these problems can happen. And they clearly recommend that three months stock should be available there. And the proper liaison and coordination should be there among the five main bodies in the health ministry. And they say a simple information system that is to be established. That you know we have a lot of IT experts. It is a simple matter of having a system that have access to all these bodies. So you know that which drug is short in three months time. So I wish that the new health minister will take up these matters and GMO will continuously pressurize until these things come out of the tent. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Tenma. Thank you very much, Professor Indi Karunathilaka, Dr. Ajit Amar Singha, Dr. Chamal Sanjeeva, Dr. Anand Vijay Vikrama, as well as Dr. Tenwan Vikrama Singh. Dr. Tenwan, I'll continue to uh, put pressure on the GMOA to get your act together uh, as long as you come on the show every single time. So that, I'll continue that, to do so. That, 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 uh, that implies how valuable GMOA is. GMOA is, of course. <laughs> Thank you very much, Nirish Lithambi, Consultant English News Director at uh, News First. Um, I just hope the Minister of Health uh, now, Ramesh Patirana, he would get his act together, not uh, not as the Minister of Plantation Industries when the uh, when the fertilizer issue happened, uh, the Minister did not do nothing. I hope he will take the courage now uh, to ensure that um, that uh, the Sri Lankan uh, health sector is uh, available and protected, as Dr. Anand said, not only for the generation now, but also for the future generations. I leave you with a quote, as I always do. Power is always dangerous. Power attracts the worst and the corrupt. Take care and good night.